Hello everybody, today's video is a five year review of my Allen Edmonds McAllisters and Oxblood. I'm gonna show you how they've held up and I'll also put a new pair of rubber protective half soles on them. We'll knock that out because it's about time to change them. Okay, so let's go. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of my five. My shoe collection. These are made of shell quarter. Yeah, here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. And here they are, all finished up. Okay, so here are the Allen Edmonds McAllisters. Now, these are actually my oldest Allen Edmonds shoes that I've purchased new, um, but not the oldest ones I own. Let me explain. So these are the ones I've owned the longest that I purchased brand new. Um, I do have a pair of NOS uh, Fifth Avenues that were made in 1987. Uh, the first pair that I purchased are this pair of black Park Avenues. Um, that I think were made in 2003 or something like that. I'll correct on the video screen. But this is the oldest pair that I own that I purchased brand new. So that's why I'm pretty excited to do a, a review on these. You may know if you're a fan of my channel, I'm a big fan of rubber protective half soles and heel taps. Um, so I'll talk about those a little bit. Um, by the way, I do have an upcoming video that will be released the following week after this one on which kind of rubber protective half soles are actually the best and why I choose them. So how you can select them as well, okay? Um, I also list where I get them. So um, let's jump into the review. So let's get into the uh, rating of these shoes now that I've uh, had them for five years and have put quite a few wears on them. I know I obviously can't tell you exactly how many times I've worn them, I don't track it, but I'm gonna give you my best estimate, knowing that I wore these shoes a lot more pre-COVID uh, during the lockdown. I didn't wear shoes as much because I did work primarily from home through Zoom. And then about June of 2022, things opened back up. Uh, you know, but by that time I'd acquired more pairs of shoes. So my best honest estimate is I've worn these about 150 times. Uh, now, these are probably, no, these are one of my very favorite shoes in my shoe collection. They are what I consider a 10,000 step shoe. Well, what does that mean? If you track your steps on, you know, an app uh, uh, like Health Through Apple, the days that I do a lot of walking on concrete, uh, where I know I'm going to be walking 10,000 steps, these are definitely one of my go-to shoes. Uh, they are among the top two or three most comfortable pairs of shoes I own, and this is built on what's called the 65 last. A last is the shoe form on which the shoe is constructed, and Allen Edmonds names them by numbers. Allen Edmonds makes not only the McAllister, but the Strand, the Park Avenue, and the Fifth Avenue, among others, on the 65 last. One of its hallmarks is um, it's actually elongated. Now, this is a weird thing. I have a wide foot. My wide or right foot uh, is an 11 and a half double E. Um, and so it's kind of odd, you would think at first that one of their longest is set as the narrowest and longest last actually fits me remarkably well. I do not have a high instep, this part of the shoe here, or part of the foot. So I get a nice tight, it's obviously not on my foot, but it's about like that when it's tied up. Um, but it just fits me like a glove. Uh, but so elongated shape almond toe but one of the reasons it fits me well is this part of the shoe you see how it's rounded here it's not straight if you put a straight edge you know like even a straight piece of paper up to this you know you can see that it's got a nice curve to it so it does happen to fit my wide feet very well uh, but I do have to size up in it so my Brannock size on my wider right foot is 11 and a half double E my narrower left foot is 11 and a half E I wind up getting 11 and a half triple E and it fits me like a glove. This shoe, when it was new, I gave it a four out of five stars on aesthetics looks. I love the way the shoe looks. Why didn't I give it a five out of five stars? The only reason I didn't was the color. Let me show you the color here as I got them. This is the color that they were. This color is called Oxblood, but I did strip them in this video here that I'll link below. Uh, and I re-dyed them a little bit darker color. I would call this color closer to Allen Edmonds Merlot and I really love the color. So today I'm gonna to give it a five out of five, but like I said, the color, the way they came, I didn't love it. I gave it a four out of five. I love about the shoes is style. I love the wingtip. I love the proportions of the wingtip to the rest of the shoe. I like the fact that the wingtip, it comes back a little bit further. It's a little bit larger, but not so far back that you see where it creases, it creases uh, across the vamp, not the wingtip. Um, I just love everything about this shoe, including the stitching. 
Uh, I just think it's a marvelous shoe. I just think it's beautiful. Fit and comfort, I gave it a three. Let me explain why. I just got done telling you how this is one of my most comfortable shoes, but I gave it a three. Well, when I got it, and I do cover this in the original video, can you see here? You see there's a little bit of wrinkling right there, right? A little bit of bunching of the leather. And I think it, uh, it only does that on the outside of the left shoe. So when I got these shoes, that was hitting my ankle bone just a little bit, enough to make it irritating. I believe this portion of the shoe is just lasted a little bit higher than my other 65 last shoes. I don't have to do this on any of my other 65 last shoes. So what I did was I, take a, I took a leather insole with padding on it. Do you see how I cut it and then I skived it, meaning I thinned it down, the padding and the leather. And I just leave these in there and that just raised my foot up just a fraction of an inch, enough to make that comfortable. With that one modification, uh, one of my most comfortable pairs of shoes, and I would definitely pack these uh, on days that I know I'm going on a, like a business trip and I can only wear a couple shoes, but I know I'm gonna walk 10, 15, 18,000 steps. That makes these one of my most comfortable shoes. So, um, but now with that, you know, so take that as you would, right? You know, cause that's obviously, oh, that's not the way it came. I realize that. So with these, um, I give it a five out of five. Without them, I couldn't give it more than a three. Uh, they're one of my most supportive shoes. I gave it a five out of five on support and the same thing now. I don't believe in arch support, by the way. The human foot has an arch in it for a reason. I don't think, this is just my personal opinion. You don't have to believe what I believe, but I don't believe we should be trying to redesign what God designed. I believe, you know, I've read from other shoemakers that the arch is supposed to be unsupported. That's why it's a muscle. You don't want to, you know, that'd be like putting your arm, uh, you know, in a brace and leaving it there. You're going to weaken it. So, um, you know, but as far as support where it should be supported, I think, you know, this is the way a, a proper dress shoe should be. Five out of five on that, construction durability. Now this has no shoe tree in it right now, and look at these things. Well, first of all, it's good you're welted. If you don't know what that means, I will link a video in the description below. But the construction, I knew the way this shoe was constructed would lend itself to uh, a lasting a long time, and, and it does. You know, uh, look at that. The materials it's made from, it wrinkles, increases, and then returns just like you'd expect it to. I mean, could you honestly tell me that you knew these shoes, the way the creases are set or lack of creases, could you honestly tell me that you didn't think that these shoes were like two or three months old? It's unbelievable. Just this leather is just marvelous. The leather quality is awesome. And when I wear these, I wear them. You know, I'm not like a protecting them. I mean, I'll wear them. Only thing I don't expose them to is like, you know, the salt, snow, and ice directly normally. I mean, they may get a little bit, but, you know, I'm not going to directly expose them to that kind of stuff, right? So that's probably one of the most impressive things about these shoes to me is just how the leather itself has held up over the years. And I did give them a little touch up on the polish. I mean, they're not perfect, you know. I mean, you can see here some cracks that I've covered up in the mirror shine, not in the leather, cracking in the wax, right, that I've covered up and, you know, I didn't strip it way off. I mean, like there, I didn't strip that back off. It's just too much work and it's not necessary. You know, and you can see a little bit of cracking of the, again, not the leather, that's cracking of the mirror shine wax. But look how well they've all held up. Let me take the, take the shoe tree out of this one. That's with no shoe tree in it. Break and how it returns. Break is a term for how the leather wrinkles and how it comes back, right? That's just perfect. Little bit of a mirror shine on the heels. So um, let me fill you in next on what I've done to these shoes sole and heel wise. So what I've actually done to these shoes is in October, uh, this was October 21st, I released a video of 2019. I stripped them and re-dyed them. So that's obviously not functional. In February of 2020, this is February 23rd of 2020, I replaced the rubber protective half soles for the first time. Now, let me show you what I had on them the first time. What I originally had on the shoes is this. These are Goodyear Neolite rubber protective half soles, okay? These are approximately two millimeters thick. They have this textured area in the front, ridges across, and it does taper down a little bit here towards the back. I don't use these anymore. The only reason I don't use these anymore is, I don't know if I should call them ugly, but they're not very nice looking. They just don't really look that pleasant. 
here's a pair of Shreveport's, Allen Edmonds Shreveport's that have them on there. Do you see what I'm saying? It just doesn't look aesthetically pleasing. These things wear, I mean, not like iron, they wear very well. They're very long lasting. They have good traction. Um, but I replaced these with this stuff. Now this stuff is very nice looking and that if it's a Chinese brand, I believe, um, I'll link in the description where I got them, Kaneji, but that sounds like a Japanese name. Uh, these are softer rubber. Um, this isn't, well, I'll leave, the, I'll leave the technical stuff to the next video. But the point is I replaced them with these and this stuff is about one millimeter thick. And if I replaced these the first time, that means these lasted uh, almost two and a half years. Um, so that would probably be around uh, about 110, 120 wears or something like that. Now, when I replaced, I'm going to replace these again now. Well, that's another, uh, they lasted another almost three years, but these have not lasted nearly as long because I've only worn the shoes since then. Probably about 50 to 50, maybe at most 60 times probably about 50 to 55 times. So these wear through much faster just because number one, they're half as thick, uh, and number two, it's a little bit softer compound. Okay, I'll compare those more in detail in the other video. So what I'm gonna replace them with this time is this stuff. This stuff is, I think, a good compromise. It's relatively thick. It's uh, about the same thickness as the Goodyear Neolite. I'll compare directly in the other video, uh, but I'm gonna use this stuff. Chic, I'm guessing is how you would say that, right? Um, is what I'm going to replace them with this time. So, uh, other thing that I need to do is I need to replace the heel taps. They're definitely right about to wear into the... Oh, there it's already worn into the base rubber, so I'm going to replace those heel taps as well. A uh, couple different things you can use for heel taps, I'll show you. Now, if you are putting on heels, uh, heel taps, uh, the brand of these that I like to use is called Guard. Where I get them from is from the eBay seller Nord Shoe, Nord Shoe, N O R D S H O E, Nord Shoe. This right here is a size six. This is a size six. You notice that it's large, it's the largest as far as, you know, I'll show you. Um, uh, it's got three nail holes in it. This is a size five. I have used these in the past and they work pretty much just as well. You can see the radius is larger on the six. Um, I like this because remember this is 11 and a half triple E. It kind of almost matches the outer diameter of the shoe. You don't have to be as careful about where you place them, where you see the wear is kind of like greatest right there on my shoes. So if I had these kind of like off a little bit, um, you know, it, it, it's just easier when the radius of the heel tap is, you know, kind of like almost the same as the radius of the back of the shoe. So that's why I like these. And then once you have them on, they're really easy to replace. Just got to get a screwdriver under it. Keep your fingers out of the way and then pry like right next to the nail head is kind of ideal. And these things generally come with these little iron spikes. Okay. And once you get that off, then you just, I found the easiest way to get the old adhesive off, like seriously, because these are adhesive backed. That's another important thing. Get the adhesive backed ones is just roll it off, just push, push, and I've definitely found that's the, it's not easy, but the easiest way, um, you know, versus using solvents or something like that, and you still have to roll it, you know, scrub, so uh, I won't show this whole thing on camera, but just roll to get it all off until it's clean enough to apply a new one, and then try to get it off your finger. <laughs> Here's the little spikes that they come with. You can also get these in packs of two at just, I think, like Walmart or CVS Pharmacy, and they'll come with these same spikes. Now, notice my finger don't put the finger behind the hole for obvious reasons. I'm not kidding when I tell you these things, these things are a lot sharper than regular nails, okay? So no joke, like be careful, right? And with anything, use common sense, you know, just because I do it doesn't mean you should. That's why we have cobblers. You know, cobblers will do this for a few bucks for you, okay? Notice again, keep your fingers away from the backside of the hole because you will poke yourself. And if you notice, the head is not round, so I like to orient them, um, you know, kind of like that, I guess. Um, actually, I like to orient the outer ones kind of parallel, you know. Now you've got them sticking out just a little bit. Maybe have that one sticking out a little more. 
Okay, now that I've got them sticking out a little bit, then I'm gonna peel off the paper. Then I'm gonna feel around to try and get it in the same hole. Felt that one pop in. It's not always the easiest thing, but you need to stay on camera. That one's in. I think that one's in. There we go. And I'm gonna do it without my without my cobblers last, just to show you that one. You do need a small hammer though. This one works well, even though it's busted. But you just need something to, you know, not smush the other end of your shoe. You don't want to let it wear into the heel. You see, I just wore to the heel a tiny bit, and there's already a little bit of a gap. That'll be okay though, because that'll that's that'll close up. But that's why you want to change these things before you wear at all into the heel. I'm just trying to use that pointy end to smack it down a little more. That's good. Okay, there is one downside to starting to do tailoring. What do you got here, kid? Nene. What's who? What, what is Nene? First of all, a unicorn. I know that, but what is what is this? Not just a stuffed animal. This is a tablet thing that holder. it's a tablet holder, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what's wrong with Nene? She has a hole. Uh oh. And I think what you guys did was you unstuffed her, and you unstuffed her, washed her, and then restuffed her, mm -hmm. and then that. Okay. All right. Uh, yep. Yeah, I could definitely sew that back together. And you want it like that, so that's like an invisible yeah. stitch. Right? All right. I'll. Uh, uh, I can do that. Let's go get this done. Not expert, but what do you think? It's closed, right? Mm -hmm. Are you happy? Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, are you happy? Mm -hmm. Yes? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Good job. What do you mean, good job? I did it. I guess I did an okay job. It's not the neatest, but functional, right? Plus, it's on the underside, so. Okay. Next order is to replace the rubber protective half soles. Now, you can see right there. So, uh, just about worn through. I mean, it's literally paper thin right there. Um, and on, you could also see, by the way, here in the ball area, it's very shiny. There's no semblance of the tread itself left. And on this one, I thought it was interesting. There's a little pucker there. See that ball, like little pimply looking thing sticking up? Um, it seems mine generally seem to wear out towards the outside edge first, I guess. So, getting these off, uh, there's really no secret. I guess I'm going to put the shoe tree back in it. I'm thinking it'll be easiest. Um, I could use my cobbler's last, but if I can... I'm not going to use a knife for this. I think I'm going to use my screwdriver. Maybe I'll just start here where it's already peeling. I'm going to be careful not to, you know, poker myself. The idea is if you can get a piece lifted. You know, I'm gonna use my cobbler's last. I have this thing.
it got most difficult there in the middle area because that part's really paper thin, you know? And it wants to rip, so it's off. Now, obviously, before I glue the new ones on, I'm gonna have to take that out to the garage to the belt sander just to even that up, smooth that up a little bit, get the, that's the old glue, that's where the glue pulled off, you see? So, I'll do the other one. get 100% of it off is a little bit down here that I'm just going to scrape off with this uh, knife uh, just because I didn't feel that I could, had good enough control with the belt sander and I didn't want to sand into that edge so I'm just going to do this manually. At least I'm going to try to. Not perfect, but I think that's good enough. Next, I gotta cut the new pieces out to match that curve. So here's the tough part. Um, obviously I'm trying to match that onto the new rubber. Um, you could use like a tape, I could put masking tape over it, pull it off. I think, I think I can do, the only downside to this is these are kind of distorted from pulling. Um, but I think I can make it work. This thing wants to keep rolling up on me as well. Yeah, I think I can make this work. I think I can flatten it out enough to get a, line. I can adjust that on the shoe as well. Now if you notice when I'm cutting this out I'm leaving extra around the edges. Um, you don't really need the extra at the back, you need the extra around the outside. I mean at least like a half an inch. I mean more is okay, you just waste material. The reason for that is because it's so hard to line up. There's no way you could line it up exactly. So you let it overhang, you have extra, and then you just trim it off. I'm gonna try to hit that line pretty close though. Whew. That's not perfectly smooth. I'll have to definitely trim that seed. It's got a bulge there, it's not very round, but yeah, see, I'm, I'm getting, I'm close. If I, I'll just have to trim that a little bit, but you see, I'll use the scissors, the, the regular scissors to get the rest of that, but we're almost there. Um, is that being the correct side? You don't need to mark these. That's the inside. So this would be the right foot, I think. Yeah, this is definitely the right foot. Which would make this one the left. Okay, I took a nice sharp pair of scissors and I got that trimmed a little better. You need to be precise with this stuff to the point of like, 
Am I cutting on the right side of the ink line, the center of it, or the left side kind of precision? Um, these are not perfect, but I think these are going to work good. I'm going to show you why this can be kind of difficult. See there, that's matching up pretty good. The reason it's difficult is because, like here, you have this curved line. There's no way you can get this exact. I know you should, oh, just line up the lines. Just trust me, it, it, it just doesn't work that way. You know, there's human error and everything. So if you get this just a little bit off at the, if you were to cut it the exact size and it's a little bit off, you see how much the toe moves from just a fraction of an inch movement at the back and it's multiplied so that's why you need it to be bigger so that you can stick it on roll it down and then where see if you're off a little bit you know you're still on if that makes sense okay so next i'm going to glue both of these up um usually what i do is i start with i glue the silt leather sole uh you know then the rubber uh then i'll go back and in some areas that look like they need it i may put a second coat on the leather because sometimes the leather uh, where it's porous the glue will soak into it a little bit. to be disciplined with the way I do things. I'd be lying if I said I am. I'm trying to get better, but directions. Uh, sand or rough up surface of material to be bonded. Got it. Material must be free of oil, grease, dirt, uh, and dirt before applying cement. Done. Apply one coat of cement to each part and let dry. Yes. Part may be left open for up to eight hours if necessary. Uh, period. May use heat activation if needed. May use heat activation if needed. Heat activate both parts to be bonded. Join parts and press. That's the part where I've skipped and I've you know, not had problems, but I think it can only help and not hurt. So, hair dryer. Uh, hope my family doesn't. Plus, plus hard part. Now I see here I drew my lines. These are shoes that are your own size that you can wear, which they often are not on my videos. But these are my shoes. There's another way you can press them. Carefully put it on. No, I didn't use a shoehorn. Shock you guys, I never use a shoehorn. And press, press. Heel hanging off the edge here, it's perfect. I don't want to bend my foot, but I can rock up on the toe a little bit. And that should do it. I'll let that dry while I do the other one. And then I'll trim them. You guys want to see the other one? Again, look at my fingers where that pen line is. Line up the edge to the edge. Keep the front off. Roll it down the center. And then press it home. Yep. Okay. 
this next part legitimately does require a little bit of skill. This part is actually, I think, a little bit easier with these thicker ones. You get more deflection of the rubber with the small ones. I think it's kind of the hardest right here where you uh, start and stop and around the nose of the toe. What you're trying to do, in my opinion, is you see how the edge of the shoe here, the edge of the sole, I guess I should say, if I turn it to where you can see it, the angle, if I matched the blade to the edge of the sole right now, it would be right about there. Um, what you're trying to kind of do is, I would say, just go to... I don't know, 10 or 15 degree angle to that. And the careful, the part you have to be careful about is when you get to the tip of the toe here, you may not realize it, that is parallel to the edge of the sole, you see, it is about there. So the, your tendency is gonna do, to be to do this, which means you'll cut the sole short. So you kind of almost have to lean, what you're gonna feel like is you have to lean the knife out when you go around the nose of the toe. I don't know if that made sense or not, but. Trying to get it started here. And I'm using the tip of the knife to guide the shoe is really what I'm doing. And I'm also using my knuckle here to push the rubber to keep the rubber up against the sole just ahead of where I'm cutting. Nice smooth pull and you get a nice smooth cut. Here's the tricky part. The thinner rubber of one millimeter is obviously easier to trim, but it deflects more. This is harder to physically cut, but in some ways it's easier to get it to look nice. Grab the piece of rubber. You gotta be careful here. I'm gonna saw a little bit. Cause I don't wanna jerk the knife. And I haven't even rubbed the glue off yet, but. And let me show you how you clean the glue off. That's simple. You could even relast it and smack it with a hammer again to, you know, really get that tight if you want. A little bit on the tip of the toe there. But you get the idea. Just do that all the way around. Get some finishing touches here. A little brown. Polish. finished up. I'll show you the bottoms. You see they're thicker. So there's a little bit of a lip there, but I'm okay with that. 
lifting up the arch of the sole there a little bit. And there's the new heel taps. When you let the heel base wear a little bit, I'll show you what happens on this one. You see, you get just a little bit of a gap right there, but that's okay. Walk on it, it'll stick back down. show you my errors right through there do you see you can see the edge of the sole I think I angled the knife too sharply or something so I actually had to take a die so that you don't notice it and on this one I didn't actually line it up perfectly you see there I didn't line it up perfectly edge to edge the rubber should have come back a little bit but looks pretty good for a five-year-old shoe worn 150, 175 times. Well, I can tell you this. You might be thinking, well, wait a minute, 365 days in a year, if you wore them 100 and, let's just call it 180 times, that would be like wearing them every other day. My advice that I heard early on about dress shoes from a successful businessman who had many nice pairs of shoes uh, is he said, never wear the same pair of shoes two days in a row. I would say you should only wear them at most one out of three days, one day on, two day off for nice shoes. It's the first thing he told me, and he said, always use shoe trees. I could pretty much guarantee you could take a nice high quality dress shoe like this, wear it every day, and you'll destroy it in six months, eight months, nine months. Another thing you want to avoid at all costs is exposing them to really heavy water, but especially salt water. What do I mean salt water? I mean in areas where they have uh, ice and snow and then they salt the roads, that stuff. That will just destroy leather. Even sometimes one exposure to salt water can ruin leather, so. So, for me, this is pretty much a, a almost a perfect shoe for what you're gonna get. Uh, you know, ready, ready to wear. And to me, that four and a half out of five star rating still applies. And these are definitely one of my favorite pairs of shoes from the color, from the looks, and especially for the fit and the support and the fact that uh, I can wear them for 10 to 15,000. I think the most steps I've taken in these shoes is probably 18,000 steps. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, go to my YouTube page, Robert Powers, and then click on Playlists. And from there, you can go to things such as before and after videos, where you'll find a whole list of videos similar to this one.